Late last week, Prime Minister Stephen Harper approved two controversial takeovers by Asian state-owned enterprises of Canadian oil companies. But at the same time, he said he will block any further acquisitions in the oil sands by government-owned firms, except what he said under exceptional circumstances. So what does this whole deal mean to Canada? Well, we go to Montreal now to speak with the leader of the opposition, Tom Mulcair. Mr. Mulcair, welcome to the program again. Thank you very much, Tom. Prime Minister Harper uh, says that this is the last time that a foreign state-owned enterprise will get a stake in the Canadian oil sands. Is that good enough for you? No, because we still don't know what the rules are, and that's been the problem. Two years ago, they acquiesced in a motion that we had made to set clearer standards for foreign takeovers. The Investment Act is not clear right now. And what we had on Friday was two announcements, but still with no criteria. That's not good for the Canadian economy because foreign investors don't know what, uh, what the rules are. And it's not good for Canadians because we don't know what the government is going to approve in the future. On the one hand, he says that these foreign takeovers under the current law are of a net benefit to Canada, but doesn't say how. Honestly, Tom, the only clear net benefit is to Nexon shareholders in Mr. Harper's oil patch. And I think it has as much to do with that as anything else. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that in the past you said that you would not have necessarily approved the CNOC takeover of Nexen. But if we could advance the clock here, 2015, in a different world, and there's a Tom Mulcair administration at 24 Sussex Drive, what would you do? Would you change this policy now of saying only under exceptional circumstances can state-owned enterprises come into the oil sands? Well, there are state-owned enterprises and state-owned enterprises. The problem with China, of course, is it's a communist country, and a state-owned enterprise is actually China. So China has now bought a stake in the oil sands. And don't forget, they have to be treated under the FIPA, the Foreign Investor Protection Agreement that the Conservatives have just signed with China. Now they're allowed to bid on whatever they want in terms of oil leases, and we can't stop them. So they can buy up whatever they want and control as much as they want. That's the underlying problem. The two have to be looked at together. We would have never done this sort of thing without consulting with Canadians, without coming up with clear rules for foreign investors. That's fair for everyone. But in every case where we've seen these big foreign takeovers, especially in the resource sector, we saw it with Valet, we saw it with Extrata, we saw it with Rio Tinto Alcan. There, was, there were lockouts, people's working conditions were lowered. We see what the strong tendency is here for foreign companies to come in and remove rights here in Canada. And it's something that also has to be discussed in every one of these cases. What about other strategic assets in this country? Would you protect them as well? I'm thinking, for example, the telecom industry, uh, B.C. shale gas, hydroelectricity. Uh, why just the oil sands? You have to define what the strategic asset, asset is. Don't forget, the first time we heard that term was when BHP Billiton tried to take over Potash Corporation. Strong reaction in uh, Saskatchewan. By the way, I agreed with the refusal to, uh, to allow the takeover of Potash Corporation. But then the Conservatives used for the first time a term that's not in the Investment Canada Act, which is strategic assets. So if that's going to be a term we're going to use, it has to be in the law. People have to know what the clear rules are. Again, they're making it up as they go along. Because even on Friday, Mr. Harper said, as you correctly quoted before, well, we won't allow state-owned enterprises to take over Canadian businesses anymore in the oil sector, except in exceptional circumstances. Well, what does that mean? When it's Friday, is that an exceptional circumstance? When it's 11.57 at night, that's what we've been seeing in these decisions. So you've got to come up with clear rules. That's good for the economy. That's good for foreign investment. Let me take you to the other major story of the week, and that is what's coming up tomorrow. The F-35 report, uh, the KPMG report is coming down. We basically already know what's in it because the government has leaked most of the information. But what it comes down to is that it's going to cost this country about a billion dollars a year to have a fighter jet fleet. Is that an acceptable amount of money to you? The problem in this case is that they never proceeded as prudent public administrators. There are rules, Tom, that exist to protect the public money. And in this case, they've always used the half lie. They said, well, no money has been spent on acquisition. Well, of course, no money has been spent on acquisition. The plane doesn't exist yet, but you've spent $700 million so far on the process. $700 million, by the way, is the exact sum of money required to lift every senior in Canada above the poverty line. That's exactly how much it would take. So they're pretending that that's not even real money. It is real money. You're right. I mean, it, it's going to cost a certain amount to keep a fighter uh, fleet, and we need one. It's part of our, our national defense. But you proceed in the normal way of public administration. You say exactly what your needs are. For example, 
it has to be able to work in the Arctic. Who knew? The F-35 can't work in the Arctic. It has to meet Canada's needs. We have to define what those are. And then the lowest conforming bidder gets the contract. Who knew? That's what public administration is about. The Conservatives talk a good game when it comes to public administration, public management, public money, but they're abysmal failures when it actually comes to doing the job. And that's what the F-35 debacle is about more than anything else. It's a fiasco of public management, and the Conservatives are going to wear this one for a long time. So we know that they are going to be looking at alternatives, but from your point of view, should the F-35 itself be off the table? Should we be only looking now at alternatives to the F-35? You define your need, you define your price range, and then you go to the lowest conforming bidder. I'm not saying anything should be off the table. That's the mistake the Conservatives made. Even when they got caught in their series of lies the first time and they were derisive and dismissive and they were mocking anybody who dared even question them, we didn't know anything about this, how could we even ask questions of a great military genius like Peter McKay? Now they're going to have to wear it. Of course we should be looking at other options, but if the F-35 can meet those criteria, that's fine too, but you have to say what they are. They've never even done that basic exercise. That's the, base, the real problem here. We have, see, F-18s right now, there's something called a super, that's the Hornet, there's something called a super Hornet. It's very close and a lot of the, the preparatory work is already done. We've got teams that are already prepared to do that. That would be one of the first ones I'd look at. There are other, there are other planes in the world, Tom, that could be looked at. But again, if we haven't even defined what our own needs are, how are you going to be able to say that you've got the lowest conforming bidder? Okay, NDP leader Tom Mulcair, thanks very much for joining us today. Good to have you on the program. Thanks, Tom. Well, let's just go back for a minute to the decision to allow the Chinese oil company to buy Nexen in Calgary. Before that deal was announced, there were a lot of security concerns raised in the United States about this. But former U.S. Ambassador to Canada, Gordon Giffen, says that the takeover probably won't hurt the Canada-U.S. relationship. Take a listen. I don't think it poses a big cha challenge for Canada-U.S. relations. Put this in context. Context: The biggest lender to the United States of America right now, uh, in the public sector, is is the government of China. So we can't get too worked up about them spending 15 billion dollars in Canada. 